actually hold my hand over the mic to be heard. So you can't hear me now, right? Because if I were there, I would be booming. That's what I'm yeah. saying, but I, you can't hear Test. me at all. But if I do this, the, for some reason the mic's got a little thing on it. So I'm okay with it. It's, it's not on. I hear me. It's on. You beat it a lot when you now it's on. Yeah, now it's on. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It's the regular board meeting for the Lambertsville Unified School District Board of Education for February 4th, 2015. At this time, if everyone will please silence their cell phones. And for everyone's information, this meeting is being recorded. Board members, please use your microphones. Please rise for Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Thank you. Roll call. Matthew Balzarini. Here. Colin Clements. Here. Sharon Lampel. Here. Shane Nielsen. Here. David Pombo. Here. Tasa Pungchai. Absent. Uh, approval and or corrections to the agenda? There are none. I move we approve the agenda. I'll second. second. <laughs> you can have it. Sharon. Gee, thanks. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, receiving a public comment. I have one. Comment card. Brian Bagley. You'll have three minutes for public comment, and this is usually something that's not on the agenda. Good evening, Board of Education. My name is Brian Bagley, and I am uh, representing the Tracy Firefighters Association. And uh, tonight, I just wanted to uh, let everybody and bring everybody up to speed, as you may or may not be aware of the community of Mountain House, the Community Services District, fire protection has gone out to bid uh, through an RFP process, through the bid process. Our fire department, the Tracy Fire Department, has currently been providing fire protection to the Mountain House community since the uh, conception of Mountain House, so it's been over 10 years. So we have put in a bid to continue to provide that service to the community out here. Um, based on the relationship that we have established um, over the years um, with the Lammersville School District, in particular with our community emergency response team program that we've started as well as our learn not to burn type programs, which is where the firefighters go to each and every fourth grade classroom and provide uh, fire curriculum for fire safety. And then also an explorers program, which is where the high school age students here at the high school get to don firefighting gear and learn what it's like to live and walk in the life of a firefighter. And so um, what, uh, what our Tracy Firefighters Association is uh, requesting is uh, that you would support us throughout this bid process. And uh, any time and consideration that you would put towards that support would greatly be appreciated. Thank you. Okay, uh, consent items for consideration. We have a few. There's a approval of governing board minutes from the 21st of January, approval of a hire approval of K-8 basketball coaches for the 2014-15 school year, acceptance of two resignations, and acceptance of Northern California Regional Library excess fund matching grant up to $10,000 towards the district's video surveillance system. Uh, we can approve all of them or take something off the agenda and, and discuss it if you like. I don't want to take anything off, but I do have a clarifying question that I'd like to ask on item C, the approval of the basketball coaches. What do the highlights indicate? Are those the new ones? So this is a comprehensive list, and the, the, the yellow ones are the new ones. Thank you. I move we approve the consent items. Second. Any further discussion? Just a personal thank you to the folks who are assisting that are outside staff and inside staff for the, uh, the basketball coaches. I know we were really struggling to find them and to see that we got coaches, and I think we got all the kids at all the schools who wanted to have a team, have a team, so I just wanted to express my appreciation to all those who are helping out and, and coaching this year. And I have a question on the, the grant. Alvina, was, were you the driver behind that? I was. Thank you very much. Nicely done. Very good. Well done. Yes, this is great. First and second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. District administra administrative reports. Item A is a superintendent's report. So I've asked Dr. Gill to do a, a very brief presentation, kind of give an update uh, with a uh, with staffing season entering uh, its uh, annual time. It's uh, Dr. Gill's opportunity to kind of 
tell everybody what's going on. Good evening, Governing Board and Dr. Nicholas. This is uh, the most amazing time because we get to uh, project our enrollment and also find, figure out our staffing. Our goal is to find and recruit the best staff possible. So we are going to go anywhere and everywhere to do that. So we have already started looking at what our needs are going to be possible needs based on our project enrollment. And um, here are our potential needs. Uh, we will have needs most probably in management, multiple subject teachers, single subject. As of now, we are looking at math, science, world language, English, and special education. But it's not limited to that because we might uh, identify some other needs later on, some classified positions and some underrepresentative group positions, which is psychologists, speech therapists, counselors, and so on. And our, our plan is to, um, there are some identified uh, uh, recruitment fairs we're already planning on going. Uh, we are signing up for these if they will accept us. Uh, most of them do. Uh, to any county offices and uh, um, any universities that are close by at least, or even far, wherever we can find good people. What we are trying to do is two things. One, we're con contacting them in advance and saying what kind of potential applicants you have. Are they going to fit our needs? And then we are scheduling our appointments and going to the recruitment fairs. And we will then review our vacancies at towards the end of April. Uh, this is just a brief list uh, because there are a few others that we are looking at adding to this list because there are quite a few others that we will be going to. And uh, then we will see towards the end of April that if we still have lots of openings, we actually might hold our own very first recruitment fair. If we don't have that need, then we wouldn't. So it all depends on our need. But that is our goal, to provide the best education and best staff to our students. Thank you. Questions? Quick question. Has the CAE not put their CAE is not doing it this year. <coughs> Neither in, yes. I just went to their website last night again. Wow. Wow. As of right now, they don't have anything scheduled. That's what they said. There, there's no recruitment fairs this year, neither in Southern Northern California. I was just on their website because we went, you and I went there last year. Remember that? Wow. On April 26th, yes. So far, they have nothing. So we'll see if they put something together. We'd we'll love to go to that because that's typically in the Bay Area. I'll call the president. I know him. Yes. <laughs> that'll be good. Name dropper. <laughs> I do have a question. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not done. Not done. Oh. Suggestion, and I don't know if you have the time for it. One thing that I found that was very productive because it is a um, it's a competitive market for employers for school Correct. districts right now, mm -hmm. um, not for those seeking employment. So what I did in those years is I contacted universities and I asked them if I could come and speak in their classes. That's a good idea. That's a great suggestion. Nice we'll definitely you take it. Your card, and you get to sell the district, and and then they call, they they check up on it. That's a great idea. Well taken. If you have time. We'll make the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I yes. <laughs> Most of their classes are in the evening time. Anyways, we'll try our best to do that. Okay. Yes. So you or another representative of the district goes to all of these? Not necessarily all of these because I need to also do lots of other work here. So, I, was, I was sitting here going, wow, that's, that's a lot of work. There is, a, there is going to be a lot more than this. This is only a brief list. Okay. There's right. a lot more. The list goes on and on as we find new ones because everybody has not advertised them yet. We are just going ahead and right in the beginning, we want to put our name on their list that we want to be one of them because these are very competitive. They only take so many tables. And we want to be the first ones to get a table in their, in their place. So it depends on uh, the needs. So some of them, it will be like a director of special ed, some of our principals, some of our assistant principals. So we kind of divide the love there and send different people to different ones depending on our need. I get it. Yes. I'm going to text the president right away. Yeah. Um, the ones that are at night, if you let me know, I would love to go with you. Okay, because perfect. They are fun. I would love, I I would love the company. Nobody else would get it, but you and I get it. <laughs> yes. They are fun. Talking to brand new baby teachers, it's fun, it's exciting. So. <laughs> Actually, the one on March, uh, April 2nd is for all interns, possible interns, 160 of them. That is in the evening time. Um, we would love to have you if you're, if you're able to join us. But at the same time, there's lots of others, um, the, like the classes. That is like a class, like you're mentioning. We get to see, talk to them, all of their cohorts at the county office. Of course I'm available. That's spring break. <laughs> So we'll talk more about that. We'll talk, yeah. Yes. Any other questions? When you go to these, what kind of literature or what do you bring in to showcase a district? 
Okay, so we were just having that conversation today because we really want our district to shine. So we were already talking about, because we, we are a growing district, so we don't really have those big, big, huge banners kind of things that right? And nice tablecloths. Fremont Unified has those. I was really jealous last year, and Ms. Ms. Lampel and I were talking, yeah. brainstorming, <laughs> how can we get that kind of stuff? So we already talked about today. We are going to order those because so when somebody enters, it's, a, it's a, like a room with uh, 40, 50 tables. We want our table to look so great, so we look attractive. People already automatically walk there. It's all about selling yourself, sure. which we are really good at. There's no doubt. So then we take information about our district, about our, our community, how wonderful we are, our schools, um, what kind of demographics we have, what kind of salary we pay, benefits, anything and everything. We have pamphlets, we have, we even give them little goodies and little gifts to take with them. And right then and there, if there is somebody really good, we do interview also. So if we catch somebody who is, we need it, and like, like uh, special education teachers or science teachers, um, they're difficult to find. Uh, and some of our needs are very specific. Like we're looking for a teacher who could teach computer science and math, right? If somebody is there, we're not going to grab that person right then and there and interview them on the spot. So if you check out those single screens that people have, because I've had those made to go on, on mine from another district, they're not expensive. You can get them at Costco Business Center for like $200. And then the screen can be changed for $100 anytime you want to change it. So yes. you get to design it yourself. And it does attract attention. It does, it's because we, we don't have one of those. We're going, to, we're going to really make ourselves really look good this year. They're teachers, pencils that say Lammersville yes. Unified. Correct. Teachers pick up pens and pencils. Yes. <laughs> out of curiosity, I, and this is just for me, but I, I don't know, given, given the, the newness of our curriculum, particularly in the online portions and the, the portions at the high school, for me, I think you might attract teachers if you just bring a laptop with a projector showing how our curriculum at the high school is run through the computers the paperless stuff, I think you're going to be drawing a lot That's of a good idea. looking at that as a potential, and a projector to rent is a lot cheaper. No, you, mm -hmm. than no, you would have to have it running on a laptop on the table. There's no place to project you it. project it behind it? No. It's in a gym. Okay, well, still. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we take one of those uh, portable it. screens. Just something small. Yes. Like I said, I would yeah. just, it's, That's a great idea. I think you're going to be drawing the people who are interested in that kind of stuff. Certainly. Show them what we're doing. Showing them a canvas and showing them maybe a Chromebook or something like that. You or know, the, canvas would be a good idea. Just pictures it has, you know, I mean, you bring yeah. pictures of yeah. our facilities. I think that speaks volumes yeah. also. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those oh, picture cool. frames and running, running through pictures of. Managing. No, no. Run, no, that's a great, those are great, those are great sessions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, it's very exciting. So it's, uh, we are looking forward to bringing lots of great people next year. Shane and I would be willing to come and hold a bed sheet up for yeah. the yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely invite you guys. <laughs> The public heard you say that, so <laughs> it's now a promise. Be there. Not a problem. For good science teachers, yes, I'll hold a bitch all the way. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So the, uh, the our second presentation tonight is a, it's really a, a really neat grassroots effort that's made by uh, some parents um, at Wickland. And it really is also a perfect expression of a common core project-based learning activity uh, that they created themselves uh, with the intent and desire to provide arts education to children. And it is uh, wonderfully thought out, beautifully presented, and it's an example of a way um, that I, uh, school foundations, PTAs, organizations can give back to a school um, inexpensively, creatively, and dynamically. So I'd like to introduce the, the ladies from Wickland uh, who are going to present our Arts on Wheels uh, initiative. Or, or up here. <laughs> we need to use the podium so we can get the microphone so we can okay. get the video. Okay. Uh, so I'm Laura Purrier. My name is Marianne Tran. And I'm Nicole Parker, and we are all parents at Wickland Elementary School. And we wanted to take a moment to uh, thank our volunteers that have came tonight. If you guys could stand up, that her, who are actually in the program. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, 
Okay, so just a brief overview of our uh, program. Um, actually, how it started was I was teaching my children um, in their classrooms. I was teaching art class art lessons, sorry. I was teaching art lessons in their um, prospective classes, third grade, fourth grade, or second grade, fourth grade, whichever class they were in. And uh, I would take about an hour to teach the lesson for them. Well, I was on the WSF board last year, and um, Christina Kelly and Erica Smith-Payne approached me and asked me if I would start the program and try to roll something out. So that's how it all began. And this is, this is what Art on Wheels is all about. So it's an all-volunteer program. Uh, they can, it can be, sorry. Uh, it can be, I'm really nervous. You sorry. Don't <laughs> Let me put this down. Let me put this down. Okay. So, okay. Uh, it, can be, it, can be consi or it can consist of parents and community volunteers. It ha it's two mobile art carts. And it consists of one art lesson per month. The uh, lesson for that month, it's, well, con or, I'm sorry, the lesson for that hour, oh my gosh, the hour lesson will consist of five to ten minutes of art history, passing out the materials, and instructing the lessons um, to the students using the, um, the projectors, and then with cleanup. It consists of eight lessons total. Each lesson is developed by the Art on Wheels committee and tailored to fit each grade level. The art, um, an art show will be held um, every May showcasing the students' favorite artwork, and the art volunteers will participate in the setup and breakdown of the art show. And we brought along some examples today of art that we have cre helped create in the classes so far this year. Um, these are a couple of examples from Ms. Kalini's uh, kindergarten class, and the artist in um, that we presented with them was Jackson Pollock. Um, this is an example from Miss Stevens' third grade class. It is of Piet Mondrian. <clears throat> this one also is of a first grade class for Piet Mondrian. And this is a Warhol printmaking uh, project that we did, and this was from Mrs. Lowe's first grade class. And this was our uh, January lesson. This was a Georgia O'Keeffe torn paper project, and this was created in um, Mrs. Wald's fifth grade class. And, and I just wanted to quickly go over the procedure that we use um, for our volunteers. They would go into the front office every, every time that they volunteer. We have a set um, Art on Wheels binder that they sign into. They pick up a name badge that, is, um, that designates them as an Art on Wheels volunteer. And um, then they go pick up the art carts. Um, we have them located in one of the classrooms. It's all prepared for them. They will then just take the art carts to their classroom, teach the class, um, put everything back on the cart when they're finished it, put it back in the classroom, and then go back to the front office and sign out. So it's all very streamlined and easy for the volunteers. Um, to ensure that everything runs smoothly every month, we want to make sure the volunteers get to their classes um, because the kids are expecting us and the teachers are expecting us. So basically, the program is a rotating schedule to accommodate every volunteer as well um, for because there's more than one parent, you know, usually that wants to volunteer in the classroom. So we created a rotating schedule so then that way one parent could volunteer, and then the next month another parent could um, become a teacher. And then, so, but in every class there will be a teacher and a helper in the class, um, as well, some of the teachers help us as well when we need it. Um, so at the beginning of every month, I basically send out a calendar to all the volunteers so they could, um, so they can plan to be um, in the classrooms to help us with the, um, Art and Wheels. And then about a, a week before, the they're scheduled to teach or help in the class, I send out another email reminding them that they are scheduled to come in, as well as the lesson plan and a YouTube link um, that every month we create for our volunteers and for our helpers. Basically, we created the YouTube link, so then that way they could, at home, watch how the art project is done um, and sort of get an idea before they go in the next month to teach the art lesson. Um, I believe Noel 
is going to play that for us. There it goes. Hello, my name is Laura and I'm the art coordinator for Art on Wheels. My name is Nicole and I am the co-coordinator for Art on Wheels. We wanted to thank you today for volunteering for Art on Wheels. As a volunteer, your primary job role is to go into the classroom that you're assigned to and you will be working for an hour in the classroom once a month. You might be the primary teacher or you might be the helper, depending on the number of volunteers that you have in your class. This video will walk you through a step-by-step -step Art on Wheels lesson. You will become familiar with the art cart, the art history lesson, and the current project. There will be two different art carts, the Picasso cart and the Van Gogh cart. You will have a specific cart assigned to you each month, which will be noted in your lesson plan email. Your cart will look just like this and will include all of the necessary materials for your art lesson. There will be a lesson plan in the folder on the cart. This is a master copy and will remain on the cart for each volunteer. You will have a teacher's set of supplies for your use during the demonstration. You will also have a class set of supplies in the storage bins below the art cart for your classroom to use. There will also be a checklist of supplies on your cart. Please make sure that you have all of the necessary supplies on the checklist before you head to your classroom. Before you begin the project, you will want to set up your printmaking station. This will include your black tempera paint, your roller to apply the paint to your child's hand, and also the python to put the uh, paint into. <laughs> so basically that was just an example of um, that was our very first YouTube video that we made available to yeah. our um, volunteers um, so that's why it was describing the art cart and the process and stuff like that but the following YouTube videos that we created were just based on the lesson itself um, so I make sure that um, they receive that the lesson plan and if any scheduling changes need to be made, they contact me and I make sure we find a substitute to go in for them because we never want to cancel out on the teachers. We, if we can't find a substitute, then one of us will go in and teach or help that day. So it's, um, it's never canceled on the school and stuff. So, one more. So basically, um, that's an overview of our program that we created at Wickland, and uh, we're very grateful for WSF because they actually fund the whole uh, program. So uh, through their fundraisers and different events, that's how this is all came about, is I guess just minds getting together and creating a program, and it really takes a community. Thank you. And I'm sure you are very much appreciated by the teachers. When I was a sixth grade teacher, there was a parent program in my school that came in and did something very similar. And art not being my forte, I really appreciated it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that was like what the teachers really were appreciating. Yeah. And it's been a lot of fun going into all the classrooms and just seeing different spaces. So I definitely need all the card in. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you very much for all your work. That is awesome. Thank you. Sorry, I, I would just like to say. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. It's volunteers like you that make our district special and make it the best district in the area. Thank you. I also want to I want to say thank you also, and uh, I appreciate we did our our uh, safety drill recently at Wickland and had a couple participants from your organization. I really appreciate you guys coming out to help, and this is a really great thing that you're doing in the classroom. And uh, you know we need we need the parental help in the classrooms like you guys have done. So thank you very much. And many thanks for w WSF for sponsoring sure. it financially. Absolutely. Just, yeah, first, this is something the district has always prided itself on going beyond just the regular curriculum. We kept music during all of the budget cuts. We talked long and hard about trying to find a way to bring art in. Unfortunately, finding an art teacher in a KA classroom setting is difficult. Parent volunteers are the way to get this done, and I am so excited that my kids are going to have an opportunity to see it. I'm hoping that the other schools and the other foundations can find a way to make this work because <laughs> there are kids out there who want this, 
as something for their lives, something that will inspire them to be in school throughout the day, a reward, a benefit to them. Not every kid enjoys math or science or music, and this is something that they want and need, and I hope we can find a way to get it across. And I thank you all very much, and I can't wait to go home and talk to my kids about whether they got to go so far. Anything further? Okay. Uh, governing board reports, trustee Clements. Um, I did attend the CSBA training for uh, orientation for new board members, as well as uh, the Brown Act training. Um, and I wanted to report in that the the three hour Brown Act training and the two day orientation, as compared to the one day orientation and the one hour board uh, Brown Act training. It's night and day. The ability to interact with the instructors, ask questions. Um, you know, so the, all the training was great, but I highly recommend, you know, like having done both, I highly recommend that uh, freshman trustees like me be sent to the two-day training and the three-hour Brown Act training. I think it was very beneficial. Um, oh, and that was, that was what I wanted to report in about. The rest of it, I'll wait for committee report on. Okay. Uh, the only report I would have is this one. Is that the same? Okay. So I went to the senior information night um, at Mountain House High School. It was very well attended, and um, Principal Colbert and the counselor, once again, were absolutely outstanding. Um, and it was a very nice turnout. We're going to have, I'm confident that we're going to have a significant senior class next year. They were. You know, people came in, they seemed a little skeptical, and then you could see as um, the principal and the counselor were talking, there was more attention, and people were getting excited, and uh, Trustee Pombo and I heard them, oh, I want to go, I want to take this, and I want to take that. We were standing by the door as people were leaving, so it was absolutely outstanding, very well organized, and very well received by the public. I also went to the community meeting where we got to meet the new um, general manager who so very graciously introduced the school board members that were there. And um, that has nothing to do with the school district, but they're talking Safeway again. We'll see. <laughs> I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> um, the only report I have is <clears throat> that I also went to the uh, Mountain House High School senior incoming senior information meeting. And I would like to also commend the Principal Faubert and the rest of the staff. They put on an excellent, excellent um, informational meeting that night. And I saw a lot of excitement in the students that were there. In fact, my daughter is an incoming senior and she will be part of the first graduating class from Mountain House High School. And she was excited. She was. <laughs> and one, one thing that I want to note is one of her friends said, you know, I wasn't sure if I wanted to come to Mountain House High School next year, but I decided at this meeting I'm coming to Mountain House High School because the people at this school care about the students, unlike the school that I'm at right now. Wow. Speaks volumes. Yeah, it does. Wow. Kudos to our staff. I also attended the meeting, that senior night meeting and want to echo the thanks for the administration and staff. They did a great job. Um, I think they broke everything down, answered all the questions people had, and um, it was well done. Uh, I also I attended the CSBA president workshop on the 24th. Uh, lots of ideas, uh, lots of stuff I'll be bringing back to the board to try and implement just to make things flow better. Um, our next item on the agenda is the uh, committee reports, uh, something new for the board. The formats change a little bit. We're actually listing all of the committees on here. You may or may not have a report. You can, you know, report out on that each time. Uh, for facilities use, item A is facility use committee. Uh, we had we held a meeting on the 26th of January. Um, during that meeting, we uh, I appointed two community members, Corey Strock and Erica Smith Payne. Um, something new also for the first time. We're recording the facility use committee meetings for people that can't attend, in an effort to try and communicate better with the public. So we were actually sitting up here on the dais and the um, meeting went real well. Um, there were a lot of issues discussed and two of, the, two of the issues that we discussed from that meeting are actually on the agenda for tonight later in, in action items. Um, the committee made an exception to the rule 
uh, we were, had an action item request by Relay for Life. We, they, the request was for a classroom and the kitchen for short-term storage uh, during their event in, uh, in June. Um, the committee approved the request for the classroom as the board I'm sure remembers that during the summer months, all facilities are not available for rental. We made exception for that, so we approved the classroom and we made the, uh, we said that the, the kitchen could be used, but they would have to use uh, food service personnel. And I don't, I don't know if that's the direction they're gonna go or not, but we remind them that if they're gonna use it, they would have to have food service people on hand. So I wanted to just update the board on that um, exception to the rule. Any questions on the facilities? Item B is the district advisory committee. Um, <clears throat> we are having a district advisory committee on February 11th at 6.30, and so I should have something to report on that at an upcoming board meeting. Okay, item C is the district English language advisory committee. And we haven't met yet, do we have a date? Yes, the district, yeah. the next DLAC meeting is scheduled for Thursday, February 19th at Altamont Elementary. Um, and this is the first meeting since I was assigned to it, so I don't have a formal report in yet. Okay. And I think it'll be the you know, first meeting under the new format, so. Okay, item uh, D, gate, arts, and music. The, on that one, okay, he's on that one. The next, the next uh, Gate Art Music Committee meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, February 17th. And again, I, um, th that'll be my first meeting. Okay. Um, no report for, I'm adding me a safety committee and I have no report for that. And item F is wellness. Um, <clears throat> we had our last wellness committee meeting on January 14th. There's a lot of exciting stuff going on. We, we are discussing the possibility of bringing the, um, farmer's market back to the schools sometime this spring or, or early summer. We haven't, don't have dates or any of that stuff yet, but we're, we're working on the logistics of it. We also started something new, and I'm probably going to botch the name of it. I forgot to write it down, but it's uh, being caught eating right, for lack of the uh, correct term. And with this, uh, people in the cafeterias will be handing out tickets to students who are eating fruits and vegetables during their meal and they can win different uh, prizes. They get their, their picture taken for inclusion in, in a, um, uh, to put up in the cafeteria. I didn't prepare well enough for this report, but that's <laughs> what's going on there. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further from the board? Um, on on gate, if there's I don't I haven't I've received in um, materials uh, that I can read on the DLAC. I haven't received any materials to read on gate. So if there's something that I need to be reading to be ready to hit the ground running, um, if somebody could send that to me, I'd appreciate it. Somebody will contact you and fill you in on what's been going on. Yeah, would it be possible to try to invite the lady who was in the heart on wheels who was in charge of that? They have been invited. Okay, very good. Uh, action items. Item A is consider approval of adoption of revised administrative regulation 1240, volunteer assistance, exhibit 1240, administrative regulation 4112.4, 4212.4, 4312.4, health examinations to comply with Assembly Bill 1667. Staff report, please. Simply put, um, the, uh, a new law was passed that there's a simpler TB clearance, which is a one-step process. Uh, that law went into play. Uh, we need to uh, make our administrative regulation meet the law, and this is what that's for. Any discussion from the board? Uh, as a point of clarification, if I could, is uh, what portions of that law are mandatory? Because I'm curious, it, it's a 60-day time frame in, in order to have a TB screening but most health professionals are required to get a TB test annually, and I'm told we're not accepting that. And I, is there a reason we can't provide an exception for that? If a health professional is required to get a test, not a screening, but a test on an annual basis, and we're gonna accept a 60-day screening for four years, I would think the annual test would suffice more than the screening would. So I'm curious what 
flexibility we have there and why we couldn't consider that an exception. If someone can provide a test that was from six months ago that said they're negative for TB. So I don't know if I can completely answer your question, but I'd be happy to bring it back, uh, back and answer. What my understanding of this is, is that it, you have to fill out, so if, if you haven't been in any environment that you could possibly be um, around somebody or co to contract TB, this process, which was check off, gives you the clearance to volunteer. And in our current policy, it would require the poke test right. and then to come back. So in order to expedite our ability to have volunteers twofold, we want to be able to follow the law, and two, the administrative regulations contradicts the law. Right. So that's what we're trying to do here. For your other questions, I'll have to look into it. Okay. Well, well I can address it a little bit, um, having some experience in this. Uh, first of all, not everyone can be tested. Right. Um, and there are a lot of people who object to um, chest x-rays or x-rays in general. Mm -hmm. This has been allowed for a long time. There's now a law that says we should allow it. Um, but doing this professionally, we've always accepted. Di the district where I was working um, always accepted medical notes, which we were allowed to do, that said this is a known patient of mine and I have recently seen them and they don't exhibit any signs of um, tuberculosis. Now there's a formal form. That's the, really the only change. Right, it, we the, didn't accept those here in Lammersville, but this has been allowed for a long time. Is it, but the, I, have, I couldn't find the form, so I, I hadn't seen it. Is it something a doctor signs? Yeah. So, and, and that's my question is, I, I don't, and again, this is just for my discussion and my clarification. If we know someone has been tested six months ago, why that negative test, a copy of that negative test wouldn't suffice over a screening that was less than 60 days old. And again, we're going to accept that screening for four years. I, I'm just... So I'm, I'm trying to understand your question, so let me clarify. If I go to the doctor and I have the poke test mm -hmm. and I come back negative, mm -hmm. that card you get lasts for a year or two, depending on mm -hmm. what agency you work mm -hmm. for. That would suffice. Okay, well, that... But, that but for somebody out of... For somebody, for somebody out of the blue who wanted to expedite their volunteer capabilities, they would be able to get something from the doctor in a one-step process. Right. That's simply what we're yeah, doing here. The, that, but what you said exactly right there, I didn't see anything in the policy that said we would accept a clean test that was taken in the last one year or two years. No, we, it has to be within six months. But if you don't have one within six months, you can bring the form from your doctor instead. Okay. That's what the policy says. Okay. Well, and I didn't see the That's six months, so maybe I missed that part. That's not new. That wasn't the only changed. The only time I saw in here was the 60 days. And that's like I say, I'm not trying to create a crap storm out of this. It's just a clarification point. I mean, from my perspective, I to take the time. I 60 days, not six months. Okay. I'm sorry. I was, no, no, I was, yeah. I was checking that. I'm yeah. like, I don't yeah. think it's no. in six months. What I'm trying to say is mm -hmm. if, if there are, and, and I will, this is a, a personal thing. My wife can't get the TB test because Neither she is mine. allergic to it, but she can do the screening. Mm -hmm. However, she does have a clean TB test. So I happen to know several medical professionals in the community, nurses and doctors, who have to get tested on an annual basis and why we couldn't just accept that clean test, whether it was 60 days old or six months old, if we're going to take a screening in 60 days and won't ask them to update that for, again, if I read the policy correctly, four years. I don't understand what you mean. You said your wife can't take the test because she she's can't. allergic to it, but she has a clean test. No, no, no. I'm saying I know said. other medical professionals who are in the community who have a clean test, my wife can now get the screening. This was her concern right. was before she had to get mm -hmm. the test and couldn't, so couldn't volunteer. No, she but can now always submit a chest x-ray. I don't remember that exception being in our rules either. Mm -hmm. So again, we, somebody, we, we can go back and review and to bring back a report. I think what our, our purpose here is, is that there was a law that was passed that allows that report to come in, or that form to come in, and we want to align with the law, and it also helps us expedite um, um, folks who want mm -hmm. to, to do volunteerism. If we need to review the policy because we're somehow excluding somebody with a test that says they're okay, right. then we need to clean that up That's as all. well. I mean, why, okay. why make them go back to the Just doctor clear. because the, the test was six months ago and, and they haven't seen the doctor in those six months so they can't get the 60-day clearance. That's just, if, if, we, if we can craft an acceptance. Because so, if we can't, then we can't and I'm okay with that. Okay. So you're okay. So for tonight's but purpose, I, so, yeah, no, this and you can bring, you guys can work that out yep. offline and try and bring something back. Yep. I do have a slight correction on um, 
What's listed is R page 49, AR 4212.4, tuberculosis test. The fourth paragraph that starts with every district, every district employee who tests negative shall undergo a tuberculosis examination. We need or obtain the TB risk assessment certificate. 29. It's just a couple, it doesn't change the meaning. It's just grammatically incorrect. Once a teacher, always a teacher. <laughs> You see that? Yeah. That makes sense? Okay. That's it. And again, it doesn't change w the content. So, so I will move um, for approval of adoption of revised administrative regulation 1240, volunteer assistance, exhibit 1240, administrative regulations 4112.4, 4212.4, 4312.4, 4312.4 health examinations to comply with Assembly Bill 1667. As Second. Amended. As, amended. As amended. It was already a second. Oh. Yeah. Who was the second? I don't know, but it wasn't me. Oh. Ombo was the second. <coughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item B. Consider approval of new classified job description contingent upon SEA's ratification, information system support. Staff report. This is a position, um, as we've grown, um, people who are splitting jobs have now taken over one part of that job. This is a job that we need, that's important for our state reporting and, and maintaining um, accurate and important student, <laughs> student attendance records and the like. So the focus of this position would be to, to be the, the, the lead on the CalPADS work, the ARIES, uh, which is our student information work, and our website. So is the holdup that CSEA is putting it through their 610 process? Yes. Okay. Correct. Move to approve. Uh, Hold on a second. I had a question. Um, for the position, it seems like the title is lacking something, some sort of... Uh, Technician, agent, coordinator, something. Specialist. Specialist. What, what would the, what would you call it? Technician. Technician. Correct. So information system support technician. Is that that's what it seems like to me? Am I? Yeah. No. It's good. I, I, it mm -hmm. sounds like a process rather than a person. Person. Right. Mm -hmm. That was kind of my. Is that something that can be added still? Yes. We can improve <laughs> as amended. Oh. <laughs> I don't think CS. I don't think CSEA will object to one more. I don't think they will. <laughs> Although, they might, they might, because they have their categories. So it might not be our people in Lammersville, but when it gets to um, their regional center. Well, we'll work with them. Yeah. Well, Mr. President, I can't move to approve that as amendment. No. Move to approve new classified job description contingent upon CSEA's ratification information system support technician. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item C, consider approval of 2015-16 job share proposal. Staff report. This is a renewal of a already approved a job share proposal. We're bringing it forward annually. Any discussion? I'll just say, and once again, they have um, put forth a very impressive, convincing proposal that this is good for students and therefore it's good for me. I agree. I, <laughs> I'm very thankful for the very, very detailed report. Any question that I possibly could have had was answered and more. And uh, I do appreciate the seeing the parental support along with it. So uh, I, I support 100%. Yeah, that, that report that we got shows why this job share is successful. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a fact. You can't, there's nothing missed. Any question I had as I was going through it was answered clearly. And again, to have parents who are in the classroom come out and say, my kid is thriving in that classroom and the parents and teachers are thriving in the classroom, absolutely. I was Fantastic. gonna say, letters from parents whom I respect absolutely. and would not have put something in writing if they didn't truly believe it. Absolutely, 100%. And, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, well I would move the, to approve the, uh, uh, 
the 2015-16 uh, job share proposal. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item D is considered approval of amendment number one to the 2014-15 facilities use handbook. Alvina, you want to give it a stab or you want me to do it? We'll probably do it together. Um, as we were aware there would be amendments as we moved forward, um, additional questions that would come up that were not addressed in the handbook or additional clarification that was needed. Um, and we had already found a few um, that are listed on, well, I'm not sure what page number it shows up on yours. It's that 2014 facility use rental policy amendment Sorry. one. And then I included the page numbers that those amendments affected. We will include this amendment um, in the back of the handbook. Also add it to the um, website, which will finally be releasing this week. We had the principal start using it, making sure the flow was working properly. Um, Mr. Balzarini, do you have anything yeah, to add? I just want to bring everyone's attention to the uh, high school track on mm -hmm. page 10. Uh, this was kind of a biggie. Um, somehow it was missed in when the updates of the handbook came out. So the approval of allowing the public to use the track on the Saturdays wasn't articulated in the handbook. So because of that, the track hasn't been open to the public. However, since then, we've had a report from the high school, which I'll cover in detail in our next agenda item, that uh, even though we're not allowing access, they're seeing significant problems with the track. Um, so the first part here is we need to include the language in the handbook that articulates what we discussed, that the, the, the track is accessible to the public um, Monday through Friday for running only on the track, not the uh, actual field, um, after school until or 30 minutes after school until dark, and then also on Saturdays during the hours at the custodian. So that's going to be the language for the handbook. Um, and then the other changes I think are, uh, I think the other significant changes are the last facility use committee. It said one community member and we're adding two. I appreciate the summary chart. Mm -hmm. This way you don't have to go through and look for all the underlines. Okay. And right. yeah, this, this was fabulous just to, because I was at the meeting so I was able to read that and say yeah. The one thing that's missing, and I don't know, I can't remember if the committee agreed to put it in, it was brought up to put something in there about no tent spikes. Actually, there was a section that did include about the tent spikes later in the handbook already. That was already there. It was there. a prohibited okay. use. Yeah, we found a different yes. section. Okay. I, I, I wanted to echo, <laughs> I wanted to echo what, what uh, Trustee Lampel said. When I saw that facilities committee uh, policy was on the agenda, my heart sank. I'm like, I got to read this thing again. <laughs> so getting, getting, you know, the, the extra work that you did was very, very, very much appreciated. Oh, good. So. Okay. So then I move we approve Amendment 1 to the 2014-2015 Facilities Use Handbook. Second. Second. <laughs> Think Pablo got it. Yeah. <laughs> By a nose. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carry. Item E, consider approval to suspend weekend access to the Mountain House High School track pending signage. Um, so we give it and we take it away. Uh, so the language wasn't in there to allow access. However, during the committee re uh, meeting, we were approached by the principal and um, athletic director, and they're having all sorts of problems over there. Uh, people are jumping the fence, they're finding gum on the track, they're seeing people riding their bike. The, the uh, custodians approach people to get off the track and they're being uh, confrontational to the point where uh, Mr. Faber had to come in on, on a weekend and help people get off the track. Um, they saw there was a full-on soccer game going on on the field. I mean, it was just example after example after example. And in thinking about it, I. From a policy standpoint, we did our part. We created a great policy, I think. Uh, you know, we, we gave parameters, laid everything out. However, we didn't communicate well to the community with signage. So we're working right now actually with the Sheriff's Department to come up with proper signage to put on the facility, at least on the gates, and we'll see how this works out. 
Um, we're going to be very specific in the signage, and until we get that signage, um, the facility committee, our recommendation is to suspend use uh, until we can, you know, make sure people know what they can and can't do. Is the signage going to be in more than one language? We hadn't, no, we hadn't gone that far. Okay. So we're talking penal code language for them uh, as well, aren't we? That's why you're with the sheriff's yes, office. As, yes, as far as, in fact, we have a good example. I uh, reached out to the lieutenant from uh, sheriff's department, uh, and he gave back some language that Stockton uses, and it's very specific about not only trespassing, weapons, um, anyone on the facility subject to search, um, I can't remember what, I mean, it was good one. pretty, yeah, it's, it's good, it's very specific. Um, and then as far as the, you know, track only, not, we have to come, we still have to come up with some signage for that. But the idea was to keep them separate. So if our policy changes, um, I can speak candidly and say that the principal is not happy with the board's decision with allowing access on the weekends. Um, he communicated that to the committee, um, but we can continue to monitor it and evaluate. I, I have a comment because I mean we we deliberated, you know, fairly hard on whether we were going to allow this, and and there were some strong opinions both ways, and I was of the opinion um, to allow the usage, but I did want to say that, you know, a few bad apples can ruin it for the whole bunch, and I. And you know, so my comment is that if if the facilities are abused and they make it hard on the staff from a cost perspective, from an, a ministerial perspective, or from a safety perspective, like jumping over the fence, then my vote's going to swing the other way. Um, and and you know, as much as I want the public to be able to use the facilities, we also have to protect the facilities and people. Um, so, you know, I, I support it, and if it if it becomes a problem, you know, it's going to be unfortunate. Understood. I can assure you that this that the committee will continue to monitor it very closely, and you know, um, I think the, the committee, everyone on the committee, is well aware of where, where the board stands, and I, I think that we're, we're trying to accommodate the community, but at the same time, we need to protect our resources. And uh, like I said, we'll monitor it closely. We'll bring back reports constantly and uh, again this this may have to change so my original objection was only when um, our kids were out there uh, practicing I did not have an objection to having it open at night when the kids weren't practicing something or on the weekends but I was at the facilities committee meeting when mr. Faubert spoke and if people are jumping the fence and trashing that has nothing to do with it being open I you Thank know, you. they're they're going anyway. <laughs> right. My my comment. So I, I think yeah. you know piggybacking on what Trustee Clemens said, if we open it, and things are going well, then all of a sudden things go sour, and we decide to lock it again. I'm hoping some positive peer pressure in the community to say, "Yo, this is ours. We need to take care of it." So I'm hoping that will work. One of the reasons <laughs> I, I'm I'm hesitant to want to do this for a couple of reasons. First, the public didn't even know they could use it. So the right-minded people who might have been there to assist us in other ways in this peer pressure type format didn't even have an opportunity to provide that assistance. We're gonna continue to exclude people if we pass this for now, but we've already excluded them. So we're really not changing the positive potential results that could happen, in my opinion. If we allow people, and, and my whole thing was, allow the access and allow and provide education have groups have meetings have people come and say look if you're going to run on the track or you're going to be out here these are the things we don't need please help us monitor this please help us keep an eye on this and protect our track so we can avoid a potential negative scenario into the future i'm i'm just i i fully heard and understood the principal's concerns but i i just if, if we're gonna all, all we're doing right now is continuing the status quo which were reported as a problem I didn't get a feel for how long. I didn't get a feel for how long, because it's while we're waiting for signage. Right. Yeah, because I think that's and, the legal and, liability exactly. piece that's, here, right? right. There's, well, yeah. and and, I'll, and just to add add to it, the sheriff's department has been put on notice. Superintendent um, sent an email to the sheriff's department requesting additional patrols and telling them that it's absolutely when the gates are closed, it's absolutely off limits. So they said they want the signage to assist absolutely. with that, and we're going to comply with that. But at the same time. 
So that's for, and that, I'm sorry, that's for enforcement. Right. So as far as them rolling up saying, hey, you're not supposed to be here, get off the track, they can do that and we'll do that now. We've been assured of that. Okay. So it's, it's more than we have now. And this is just, again, to, for a, a legal reason to protect. Do we have a time frame? Yeah, I think the three of us were all asking that. <laughs> I guess. I, it's, yeah, I, know it's I mean, like, really, a, a week, a month, three months. I don't know, we, we have to work on, some, uh, uh, something new came in today that we, <clears throat> something new came up today we have to kind of navigate also. I've been, I've been keeping in contact with the superintendent and staff on this. Um, so in order for them to take enforcement action, they need to have someone that's willing to sign a citizen's arrest that's from the district staff. So now we have to create, yeah, now we have to create a new process <laughs> for that. So we need to probably establish a phone number, have a way to contact a staff person that can come in and is willing to sign a citizen's arrest if the person's not willing to comply with the orders of the sheriff. Department. Why? Isn't it trespassing? It's a misdemeanor. You have to have a citizen's arrest. Yes. It's a misdemeanor. Cops don't so, do misdemeanors? No. <laughs> they don't arrest for misdemeanors. I don't know. They Just don't have the... It's, it's, they don't know. <laughs> yeah. Law enforcement you doesn't have... for misdemeanor? I'll explain to you. No. <laughs> Well, no. If it's because if it's a property crime, if it's if it's our property, we have to say that that person I confirm is not allowed on our property. I want them arrested. Oh, oh, oh so okay, yeah. They don't. Know Doesn't have to be a staff member and can be a board member. Oh yes, you can have my phone number. Sorry. Willing. <laughs> yeah, I'm around the corner. I'll happily drive over. And as far as Trustee Nielsen's comment on education, I think the signage would be an integral part of that education, letting people know exactly what is and isn't acceptable. Sure, I, and like I say, I. It's just my whole thing about this is the only people that have been on the field jumped the fence to get there. So clearly they didn't really have an interest in obeying any rules to begin with. And we're not allowing people who want to obey the rules to have access to it to help us police it. I, I fully support having some sort of legal signage because I get because it, without it, even though we've told them, there still has to be some notice that it's private property and all the rest of that stuff. They have to have some sort of post the notice they can't be there, even though there's a fence with a gate that's closed. I, I just, I, I'm hoping this can be very short term because I do believe the solution to this is community involvement. Much like the solution to our art program is parents being involvement. If we get it, the community who respects and uses that track for the right reasons, they're going to help us take care of it. And I think that's ultimately going to be a part of the positive solution. So I'm and just hoping it's very short term. And I'm, I hope you saw in the language in the, the amendment that we're adding to the to the handbook, in that item it specifically says the school district requests community members to help us enforce these rules to keep our track in good repair. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. yeah, I mean, that's that's the intent of the policy. That's what we're trying to do. I, I just, we have, and again, there are two separate sign issues. We have one for trespassing after, after hours when the gates are closed, and then we have the other signage, which is going to have to kind of articulate the, no gun, the no policy. Spikes. Yeah, the yeah. policy, no bikes, in track only, no field, you know, all that, those kinds of things. So it's going to be a book. Probably. I don't <laughs> so think there's I, any way to avoid it. I, I, it definitely sounds like this is a lot of work, but can this be prioritized so we can get this open for our public? You know, we, we, we've heard from the public. They want to use our facilities, um, and we need to maintain the feeling out there that they are being listened to. Um, hopefully, they'll watch the board meeting and see how much work has to, has to be done. Um, I mean, it's, okay. if, you, if you're asking yeah. for an estimate, um, what, do you, what do you think? Month and a half, yeah, middle of March maybe. So, given, the given the winter months and stuff, if we, like yeah. I said, I'm, I'm really just hopeful. If this is extending into April and May, you know, I, I just really worry that. I, I'm hoping, well, at least I, from my perspective, I'm hoping it doesn't just kind of fall to the side with all the other stuff that's going on. It's not not a priority, and it's not that we're going to ignore it. But March, April bring major issues for the district that are going to take our time and consideration. And so. You know, oh, I, I assure you, it's, it's a priority and, and for the committee. Absolutely. I believe staff, sure we'll that be staff right knows here. where we're at. So this who is, knew it would be 75 degrees in February and people <laughs> would want to use it? <laughs> you said winter months. I'm like, yeah. I would like it if it was rained out. That would be really nice. <laughs> okay. I, I will move to approve suspending weekend access to the Mountain House High School track pending signage. And I will second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item F, consider approval to authorize the superintendent to submit part four SFPD 4.07 form to the California Department of Education for Peter Hansen Elementary School. Staff report. 
This is uh, one of the steps to getting uh, our plans approved. Uh, just it's part of their procedural norm, and uh, this uh, was forwarded to us by West to keep the ball rolling at this at the CDE. Any board discussion? I will move for to approve to authorize the superintendent to submit Part Four SFPD. 4.07 form to the California Department of Education for Peter Hansen Elementary School. Second. Anything further? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item G is considered approval of change order number seven for Mountain House High School. Staff report. Um, this change order reflects uh, money being given back towards the project that was originally paid for by the district um, but was also in the Turner contract. So um, when we met with Turner and finalized how we were going to get to zero, which is the change order approved about two months ago, uh, this money was then not given back to the district, but was part of that agreement that got the change order. I think it was change order number five, uh, which was zeroed out. So this is officially accepting that, but it was part of that long process. <clears throat> Or discussion. Then, can I clarify then that these, all of these change orders, because it was number seven, I assumed that, that the additional expenses, not the give back, but the expenses were not included in that part five discussion. Am I incorrect in that? The amount was included in that, that part, or the, the, the change order five. The details are being approved by the board tonight. If you have any questions about those specific items, we can certainly get answers for them. But the, the amount was was discussed in, in change order five. I did have I did have a couple of questions, but the most material for me was on the regrading of lots, um, what we call in construction the winterization of the lots for stormwater pollution prevention plan. That was twenty five thousand dollars. My question is, was the phasing like when the construction was going to occur? Has that changed since the contract was executed with Turner? Because if they knew they were going to go through a winter, right between the phasing, if they knew they were going to go through a winter, then to me the winterization of those lots should have been included in their original bid. And I'm not saying that uh, maybe it changed. I just that's my question. I wish I could answer your question. Um, I can I can certainly get an answer and get it back to the board in terms of the phasing of how they did did excavations. I will say that the majority of my questions came down to very similar things, but in in if and, and I wasn't in, in addressing my question, I wasn't aware if this was all part and parcel of the negotiations that we had with regards to the concrete issues and the pavement issues and all the rest of that stuff and the resolution that we came to with the give backs on all sides and these numbers were all part of those discussions, then I'm, I'm, I'm all fine. Oh, so, okay, so I, I, maybe, I, I think maybe I was just absent in the, in the previous commentary. So these were all part of that discussion that you already said, right. hey, okay, here's, we're going to negotiate, we're going to come up with some numbers. Never mind, I withdraw Correct. my question. Thank you. I move we approve change order number seven for Mountain House High School. Second. Anything further? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, information discussion items. Item A is CalPads 1.17 FRPM English Learner Foster Youth Count. Staff report. I don't think in the past we had brought this report to the board before. Um, it's a required report to the state. I know um, Ms. Lampel had commented. Um, it's, it, we have several required reporting periods. This is the first. We have another one coming up in March. This provides us our, our in the information that we need for our supplemental funding. Um, our district does not qualify for the concentration funding where we would have more than 55% being reduced, English learners, um, the foster youth. That's what this report identifies. This is an extraction coming from our student information system, ARIES, that provides to the state through this process how much funding that we'll get um, I wanted this brought to the board so the board could see how this stuff works, having just mm -hmm. um, educated two pack and DAC meetings in my own district. The, a lot of people find the terminology of unduplicated count very confusing and it's not probably the best word to use but it actually does fit. 
because what it means is students who are in those supplemental grants that we get extra money from the state for, they're only counted once. Previously, when we had all these little buckets of categorical funds, English learner, they got funding in this bucket. And they also happened to be a foster child. They got money in this bucket. And they're low socioeconomic. They got money in this bucket. Now, in this new funding formula, that child is only counted once. One bucket. Mm -hmm. One right. bucket. So they are an unduplicated That's right. count. So when you look at the numbers across, you can't add to say, oh, this many English learners, this many low socioeconomic, this many foster. Um, there's more than just free and reduced lunch, with, which Ms. Kaiser knows. Um, it also goes on the parent education level that we survey, and all of that information comes into this. So I just thought it would be a good education for the board to see how these numbers work. I've been studying these ad nauseum to explain them to the community where I work, and I thought it would be a good education piece mm -hmm. um, to come here. I, I appreciate it because I. It's very I'm a little, confusing. I'm, a little, well, not, I'm not confused as much as I'm surprised by some of these numbers. So, mm. I, well, and, and it's and it's been it, it, we hit the 24, 25 percent each year. So it's interesting how even though we've grown so much, that percentage with that growth still remains pretty close pretty close mm -hmm. to the 24, 25 percent. Well, that tells us that the, the growth in the community is representing what's already here. Exactly. Which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Thanks for this, Alvina. Welcome. Uh, item B is uh, dis district school resource officer. So um, we are we have brought forward a couple of times a presentation from the sheriff's office and a, and, a, and, a, and an information discussion item about uh, having a school resource officer at our high school and representing who can work for, with all of our schools uh, moving into next year. Um, that process would require an MOU. And um, I wanted to bring this forward again so we can talk about it as a, uh, from the board uh, as we move forward in that process because uh, we're starting staffing, budgets are being set, um, moving forward. I want to keep, keep this conversation going. Um, and so I brought it forward tonight to give you another opportunity to talk about school resource officer housed at the high school serving our community schools as well. Could you remind us what the district's cost is? Approximately eighty-four thousand dollars. I've spoken on every occasion that we've brought this up, and I am all for school resource officers, even if the amount was something we had to struggle with. I, I think it's a fabulous idea, and I've gone on and on before about the, how powerful having a school resource officer um, is. So, I'm on board. Agreed. Having having been a school resource officer myself for two years, um, it's a it's a great program, and. Uh, it's a great program, especially if you have the right person doing mm -hmm. it. And that's one thing Dr. Gill and I spoke about was trying to bring portions of this uh, as we progress through this process to our uh, safety committee. It's comprised of administrators mostly and teachers, and now we're going to have community folks. So we're hoping that we can get some input to help select the right person through that process as well. And I believe Dr. Nichols is on board with that. The only comment I have on it is how soon. <laughs> when I, the the sooner we can get this person on board, the sooner we can start indoctrinating them into the culture and making them part of the culture and figuring out what it is we're doing and, and getting this going, the better in all facets. Mountain House, the high school is developing its identity, and if we can have the right person help develop that identity and develop his or her identity along with it, it this. As, as a former school resource officer, imagine a better opportunity to go into a school than when it's brand new. There aren't already all the other things going on that, that are existing in, in the current high school. You can try and nip things earlier, be a part of a solution before it's a huge problem. I, the sooner we can get this done, the better. That's my perspective. I, I'm, I envision the fiscal year is, I'm sure that's fiscal what year. the budgets are awesome. designed around. So. Awesome. so you're on the safety committee? I am. Okay, so when we got to the point where our safety committee would have input to the selection of the person I, who I will most likely be there? Yes. Oh, well, anything the committee does, I'll be there okay. for sure. And then I, you know, it'll, of course, it'll come back to the, to the full board. I don't know. We haven't really gotten that far as talking about selection process and things like that. But we were talking more traits, responsibilities, help try and design the MOU mm -hmm. around what we're trying, you know, what we want for this district. We're sliding into our alphabet soup for anyone. M MOU is a memorandum of understanding. It's an agreement between the district and the sheriff's department. <laughs> yeah. 
And I also was opening I, I, uh, a follow-up of a, a last board meeting information discussion item that um, information came forward this week that was not able to be put on here. Would, is it all right with the board president if I hit a, one quick announcement? Announcement, yes. The announcement is, Denise Rizzo, that Mountain House High School received its accreditation letter this week. And... And the A through G outlines that require this, the, that's the last step in the process, have been submitted to the University of California in their new streamlined system, which means that very soon, a matter of weeks, all of the steps for graduating high school seniors next year will be accomplished well below the typical time frame. That was my announcement, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Rumors, rumors sent out by some other district notwithstanding. So, and if I understand you, what you're saying is my daughter will graduate from an accredited high school next year. Correct, with A through, a through G approved classes. <laughs> kudos, kudos to the staff that put the work together to get yes. that thing submitted and get it done in such a completely amazing time frame on all levels to get this thing accomplished before, before the first year of the school is actually complete is unheard of, might not be the proper phrase, but it's gotta be pretty close to that. And, Again, all the staff, administrators at all levels, thank you very much. Absolutely. I've never seen the approval of one course go through this quickly, much less a school. Thank you. <laughs> uh, next item's calendar. Monday, February 9th is district holiday for Lincoln's birthday. Monday, February 16th, district holiday for President's Day. And Wednesday, February 18th is our next regular governing board meeting at 7 p.m. I, I have a question on the calendar, or on future calendars, actually. Since the, the board is taking a more active role in the committees, and by the way, Dr. Nicholas, if, if, I, if I ask a question and the juice is not worth the squeeze, that's one of my phraseologies, feel free to say, Colin, I, I think that's more work than it's worth. Um, <laughs> but my question is, to the extent a future committee meeting is also known, can we put it here as well for the community? I like that. And if you know, if it's not known, I or you know, I don't want to create heartache. If it was, if it was developed, if the date was set on Friday, you know, it, it was after we published the the agenda. But to the extent it's known, if we could put it on there, I think that would be great. Mm -hmm. So when we have the dates, we'll put them on here. But sometimes the juice is spilt, and it have to, has to be cleaned up and changed. <laughs> I I did that was it. Good. <laughs> Touche. Trustee Nielsen. I move we adjourn to closed session. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, ladies. Thank you very much. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.